Hi, and welcome to the next video in our series of presentations about Rhapsody and modeling systems and software development. My name is Jeff Cohen with 321GAG. Today we're going to be talking about modeling structure. Just a reminder where we are, this is the seventh in our video series. Today's video is, as I said, about modeling structure. If you've missed the previous ones, that's fine. This video stands on its own, just like the others. And you can go back and watch the others whenever you get a chance. Okay, so now what we're looking at now is an activity diagram. And we wouldn't normally think about that as being structure. Instead, that is behavior. But this is a great place to begin. Let's start from the all the way back. In classical systems engineering, one begins with a concept that we're going to begin with some requirements. They may be vague requirements at first, but we'll start with those requirements and we'll go in and we'll derive new requirements and we'll detail the requirements and then we'll build things like this to refine the requirements. As part of that refinement process, we will then allocate the actions to specific swim lanes. Now that's great. But that only works if you're starting from a brand new green field where you have nothing defined. And then you can decide what those swim lanes are by using some type of decision matrix or other type of uh, analysis that you're going to do to determine the best solution. In many real world projects, you don't have that luxury. Either we're following on from an existing project, a, a maintenance or an additional phase of an old one. So the pieces are already defined, the, the, the parts of the system are already defined. Or because of how our organizations are defined with specific roles and tasks, the organizational parts define what the, organ, what the system is going to look at. But regardless of how you determine what the pieces of the system are, the major task is to allocate the specific actions, the specific functionality to those structural com components. Now, as I said, for this, for this task, we're going to start at an activity diagram often. But let's take a couple of steps back and look at what the structural elements look like and what they are in SysML so that we know how to move on the basic fundamental structural entity in SysML is the block. Blocks represent a lot of different things. They can represent something physical, like a system or a subsystem, components, other hardware that's out there, or something a little more abstract or a little more uh, logical, software that exists or software that's part of the overall system but perhaps outside of our immediate view. They can represent real items or it can represent abstract concepts, uh, some other model out there, data, for example. Often what we're going to do is take these structural items, these blocks, and we're going to try to define them in new ways. To do that, we're going to use a stereotype. You can see the stereotype here. That's actually a stereotype. The block itself is actually a stereotype, but we can put another stereotype on top of that to identify that this is something that's existing or this is something that is new or it's hardware. We can even make those types into new terms so that instead of seeing blocks in our browser, we would see those new terms. The block itself is defined by its features. So, a block is a structural element, and those features can be either structural, or they can be uh, interfaces, or they can be um, behavioral. Structurally, we would have things like value types. We would have other parts that they contain. We would have interfaces to other parts of the system. Constraints and associations are also structural elements. When we talk about behavior, we're talking about what the block is going to do. So we're talking about its operations, its activities and actions, activity diagrams, and its state charts. 
A common way to simplify understanding of a block behavior is by generalization. The generalization abstracts out common behavior and entities into similar elements. So in this case, a car, a motorcycle, a tank, those are all types of vehicles. And we know that vehicles do certain things. So we can use this abstraction and this generalization level to be able to talk in general about how blocks work. One of the main reasons we do this is to extend or specialize it. So for example, if I had a navigation system, I might include a block that's a GPS. And that block returns position and location, or location and velocity. The specific version of the GPS that we use, the vendor provided off the shelf element, that would be the specialization. When blocks need to communicate with each other, they need that, that paradigm to be able to, to communicate. And the way it does it is with associations. Associations can be one way or two way. If it's one way, we refer to it as directed. And we'll see this arrow at the end showing which way it's going. We also have a multiplicity. Is there just one or is there more than one? And we have its name. So how do we read this diagram? Well, we start with the simple directed association between the driver and the fuel gauge. A driver has a fuel gauge. It has exactly one of those. And the driver knows it as its fuel gauge. Similarly, in the bidirectional association, the two-way association, the driver has one or more cars, that one dot dot asterisk, one or more cars, that it knows as its car. The car, on the other hand, has exactly one driver that it knows as its driver. There are special types of associations, aggregations, and composition. And these give some more information. Aggregations can be either directed or bidirectional. An aggregation is a has a relationship. So in this case, we have the, mo the monitor pool filter has a sensor. Normally that would be showed with a hollow diamond. The composition relationship is shown by the solid diamond. So the monitor pool pump back pressure has a pool equipment, UI pool equipment. Notice it's the same phrase, but it means something a little bit different within systems engineering and within the SysML. Within SysML, it means that this part is created right here. That part's name is its UI pool equipment, the name from the previous page. Now, speaking of parts, parts are how we decompose blocks. The other way to say that is a block is composed of its parts, or it's constructed of its parts. We have a couple of different ways that we can show that. Obviously, as we showed it on the, the previous page, we can show that with directed composition. We can also show that as an internal block diagram. Now, an internal block diagram is interesting because the boundary of the internal block diagram represents the owning block. In this case, it's the block EX underscore monitor pool pump back pressure. So this, this edge, this boundary box, is that upper block. And then these parts here indicate the parts of that system. We can also use this methodology or this, this mechanism to show the parts. I use this one when I'm trying to give a quick overview of the part of the overall system with its parts very quickly all on one view. All of these mean exactly the same things, but you're going to use them in different contexts based on what you're trying to show. Here I'm just trying to show the overall view. Here I'm trying to show the internal structure and the relationships among the internal parts, and here I'm just showing that there are parts. A 
along with block definition diagrams, internal block diagrams are where we spend most of our time and where the blocks show their relationships. Internal block diagrams show the parts of the block, as we just saw, their relationships, their associations and compositions and uh, just directed associations, and their relationships with the the blocks to the part to their ports, their communication ports, as indicated by these squares here. Now we connect these ports with a link, not a, not an association. A link is a realization of an association, so it's a specific one to one. Just as a part is a specific instance of a block, a link is a specific instance of that association. We could end up with some very large internal block diagrams, though generally it's considered a good rule of thumb to try to stick with that 10 plus or minus or 7 plus or minus 3 uh, blocks on a page. If you have to go with more, often what you'll find is it's better to show a block that consumes, that, can, that includes other blocks, that is built out of the other blocks. It makes it easier for continued maintenance and for ease of understanding and for just doing the initial interfaces. Now, as I said at the beginning, it's extremely common that the basic structure of your system is going to be well known when you start. And again, it might be just due to your organizational behavior or what groups you're in or the fact that these things have been done for a long time. So some of these blocks may be well known and then when you make them as parts, those parts, of course, become specific instances for the system, but again, they become very well known. But now comes the, the, the main focus, which is how do we assign the functionality to the blocks? And we're going to go back to that very first slide that I showed you at the beginning that shows the activity diagram with the actions that are allocated to the specific swim lanes. The swim lanes are going to represent your parts. If you have just a single action like this, well, that becomes an operation of that block. The, the command or the, the uh, object flow, the data that's flowing back and forth out of the pins, that becomes your value, the value properties of those blocks. When you have complex behavior here, like looping and some timing and things like that, that is behavior, and you can represent that behavior a number of ways. You can do it with a simplified activity diagram, though often what you're going to find, like in this case, what it really is is it's state-driven. It's event-driven behavior, and it makes more sense to show that behavior with a state chart, and that's what we're going to discuss in the next video. In our next video, we will have modeling behavior with most of the emphasis on state charts. Of course, if you need more help with systems engineering, if you need tools or process guidance, um, consulting, or tool training, please contact 321GANG at our website, www.321GANG.com. Also, because there is a plethora of good information out there, other videos, um, presentations, and, and white papers and things like that. Thanks a lot.